Okay. So this is my beautiful, wonderful, amazing grandmother. And I wanted everyone to get to know her. And um, so if you can tell people your, your name in case they don't know you or didn't get to meet you. So can you tell them your name? My name is my name. Mm -hmm. My name is Delfina Lucero. Uh, and when you were a baby, uh, were you born in El Paso? Yes, I was born in El Paso. And on Christmas night, my mom was having a, a baby. <laughs> <laughs> And that that's that must be something else on Christmas night. <laughs> Probably cold. <laughs> and I, 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 it's when was your first uh, your first great memory of your parents when you were old enough to remember? My parents. We were a usual family and. Uh, so, uh, after when we started, uh, when we were teenagers, I was I was barely about nine years old when my parents separated, and we we went to stay with my mother. But it didn't work out because she couldn't. There were six of us. It's a lot. And, <laughs> and she couldn't do it by herself. So we, the girls, went to stay with my grandmother, my father's mother. And the boys took off to California, different places. And then into the service, and uh, but we, we, although we were far apart, we never grew apart. We always were very close. It shows you've done a, you've made this family so beautiful, and we're so close. Um, I think that started off when you're re help raising Aunt Carmen. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. And Carmen, uh -huh. when you when you you took care of them at a young age. Yes, uh, I was the oldest of the girls, and uh, Carmen was the baby. So we girls were very close when we were very young. Uh, I tried to take care of them. Because uh, in a way I was a, I was uh, the mother after my mother was not there with us. Did you have to? What's it like disciplining her? If she did something wrong, how'd you how'd you correct her? Considering you were in a different position. We were so close together at, uh, in age that they just seemed to do what I, what I wanted them to do, and I did what they wanted. <laughs> <laughs> was there a curfew? Mm. Yeah. Oh, was there a curfew? Did they, uh, did they have to be home by 10? Or? Yes, yes we did. Mm. But uh, when we started growing up a little, uh, we would go to the show, the movies, uh, it never occurred to us to be out late. Hmm. So, What we, movie did you go see with her? Uh, with my sisters? Mm -hmm. What was showing at the movies at the time? Was uh, it... Uh, the, the, what's now considered the uh, oldies. <laughs> Uh, Oldies, <laughs> old like John Wayne movies. Uh, no, I don't think John Wayne was famous yet. It was uh, more back. 
Okay. But I can't think of their names like, well, like Betty Grable. Oh. And, like White Christmas. Uh-huh. And that's amazing raising those kids. Raise, raising, being young, raising young. Uh-huh. And then you, I can imagine working, what was your first job? Uh, that was when I was out of high school and, yeah. and uh, Is there a time you didn't have to work? That you didn't work because you didn't have to? No. I went through school, through grade school, and started high school. Went to high school for two years. And then one day I told my my father, I don't want I don't like school. <laughs> <laughs> he let me quit. He said you don't have to go. So I didn't. I only went to two years. Two and years. Was, uh, and then I just stayed home with with my sisters. And at the, I interviewed Uncle Ted. Um, how was he, in your eyes, growing with him, Uncle um, Ted? You mean after my husband died, or...? The, the, all the way through, as long as you knew Ted. How was, how, from your eyes, how would, what do you think of Ted? And seeing him through the years, what's the impact he has left on you? I think of Ted as my fourth brother. Although I feel that I'm even closer to him than my own brothers because they were so far away and Ted has always been there. So he's a brother to me. He's a he's a wonderful man. Mm -hmm. And I, I always ask the romantic questions. Uh, when you met my grandfather, uh, how many, did he ask you out a lot? Was it, did you say no a few times? Was it, how, when he asked you out, was it a long, I want to date you, and you were like, I don't know? Or was it, oh, yes, yes, yes? Uh, you mean my husband? Yes. Uh, I, my God, like how was the dating well, thing? Well, we met on a, believe it or not, the baby, Carmen, started dating before <laughs> <laughs> with a guy that ran, that um, came to live across the street from us. And when, and of course I wouldn't let her out by herself. So they agreed that they would bring a, a guy to so we could double it, and that was your, uh, that was... That was again. a start? Mm-hmm. What was and, your first date? And we <laughs> liked each other the moment we saw each other. We, we, Love at first sight? It was uh, very fast. And Within a year, I think, it, it we got married. Wow. Mm -hmm. And. Ted said to ask you uh, how you felt, because he said he would go to movies and he would tell you as if it was a true event. And he said you loved it. And when you're alone with, with him and he's telling you these stories, what, what's, what were you feeling? Was it always this heart thought? How do I ask? What are the feelings when you're alone with him and the kids aren't around? Yeah. It was a feeling that I'll, 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 I've never felt again. It was a good feeling, strong. I loved him with all my heart. And. And from that relationship, you had amazing children. And when I say amazing, I mean a, a lot of amazing children. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, the firstborn was uh, who? Me. My mom. 
Uh, when you find out you're pregnant with my mom, were you, you're happy, but are you scared or curious or? I was very happy because we had been married four years and nothing had happened. So when it finally happened, it was him that kept saying, well, when are you going to show or do, what, <laughs> what's going to happen? Are you sure you're pregnant <laughs> and this and that? He was more, he was uh, more anxious, I guess, because my feelings were inside of me. But he wanted to see what was happening. I was told, you're a, you're a doer. Uh, Uncle Tess says, your grandma's a doer. Uh, she's not much of a talker. She's a doer. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the day she's born, uh, I learned this, that the man's not allowed in the delivery room, mm. which I don't like, but that's the past. Um, so you're, how does, what was that experience alone giving birth to your first child? Well, uh, my, my in-laws, especially my mother-in-law, kind of took over right away. I knew nothing about babies. So they, they took care of her. I was just on the side <laughs> until I started getting a little experience. She didn't come with instructions. <laughs> <laughs> Did uh, she keep you up at night with the crying? Or was she a good, quiet baby? No, I don't think so. I, I think it was pretty normal. Yeah. And then uh, who, the second child? The second, oh, the first one? The first, my yeah, mom, the uh, second was uh, Stella? No. Uh, no? When, when your mom was going to be born, she, her father kept saying, it, this is going to be a girl. And when she was, then the second baby, when we found out about the second one, this one is going to be a boy. <laughs> he just seemed to... I need a... So, yeah, after that it was pretty normal, you know. You just I got used to I it. I learned to take care of my babies on my own and, you know, that. and then this happened about that he died. And my, my in-laws, uh, they helped me a lot, a lot. Yeah, Uncle Ted said that um, they would help you money-wise, and and he actually um, louder. Oh, so they said there was. They, they remembered with kids at Nordos that they would have food, maybe a burrito, and some whatever was left. They would share it, mm. and uh, I was told that he loved your food. That was. You're, he loved the food that you made. Oh. And the kids loved it too. And they felt like he was saving some of it to share it with the kids. Because they get the joy. I get a bite. You get a bite. You get a drink. You get a drink. <laughs> and um, so th I hear nothing but joy and good things. Um, and Eddie very much looks like him. And uh, I, I'm going to ask because Eddie is such a interesting character. Uh, how was he as a child? Who was he? Uncle Eddie, my Uncle Eddie. How was he as a baby and a child? Was he uh, well-behaved or was he mischievous? Are you talking about Eddie? Eddie, was he a mischievous kid? Uh, he was the usual, but uh, I wasn't too surprised one night when the police came and knocked <laughs> on my door and told me that uh, 
some boys had started a fire across the street and oh no and that uh, they think they wanted to make sure if he was with them and of course i said that's my son <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Eddie. Uh, no, but I told him that I would take care of it, that I would find out and take care of it. I'm sure he fessed up. <laughs> <laughs> he was always musical. He still is. And uh, he, he, did he get that? He got that from his father, right? The music? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, because uh, music has never been my my thing. But you yeah. love to listen to him play. Oh yes, I love it. I love it. And then, because there's a lot of kids here, the third child after Eddie? Belinda. Belinda. Excuse me? Belinda? The, the, your third child, Belinda. Yeah. Uh, when she came along, I, she, I interviewed her and she told me she realized you were an amazing woman and she loved you so much, but she didn't really realize it till she was 15. So... Who was this? Belinda. Oh. She was 15 when she realized... Yes. And so the first 15 years before she realized it, how was that raising her? Because it seems like it took a while to get there. So there's an in-between story there well, to me, she was a little more mischievous, uh, but uh, I was lucky that all my children did pretty much, uh, they obeyed me, they, they did what, I, what they knew that I wanted them to do right. And Belinda, once in a while, she would fight that, but she would do it. She turned out uh, uh, really good because of you. <laughs> That's wonderful. She's, she just loves you so much. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then, is it Stella next? Yes. It was Stella. Mm -hmm. And uh, Stella, I consider a patriarch of the family. Um, she helped raise us, um, and you, and I see her, I see a lot of you in her. You pass something down. Mm -hmm. She's so motherly to all of us. Uh, I, we say Aunt Stella, but I think we, Ruli, Jacob, and I, and all the cousins could say second mother. And it's amazing how she does that. But that comes from you, an influence. Um, was she always this sweet as a child? It, uh, she was kind of a crybaby when she was uh, <laughs> little. But after that, she was pretty normal. Very normal. Yeah. Very shy. Very shy. And she went to California. How hard was that for you, that she left? It was very hard, but uh, she needed to, mostly to see if she could find a good job, because there didn't seem to be much here in El Paso. But uh, what was very hard for me was when they started it leaving the house. Your but, children are your life. Mm-hmm. And... The death of my dad. And... Uh, and then there's the... I think there's one left, right? Is it the baby? Is it Albert? <laughs> the tiny little baby Albert? You're covering Excuse your mouth. Me. She can't hear you. Baby, tiny baby Albert? Is he, he was the next one? Albert was a, he's a baby. The tiny little baby <laughs> Albert. <laughs> he's still. I tried to hold him in my arms, but he won't. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like him. <laughs> he he told me a story. 
It did. He said, when I was a child, I would, um, I was, no one was my age. So at Andodos, they had a ditch and it was really rocky. Yes. And since I had no one to play with, I got a tennis ball. And I would get it and I would go, whoop, and I would throw it. And then it was so murky down there, but I would go find it. And it would take like 30 minutes. Mm. And I realized, I'm bored. I'll do it again. Whoop. And, <laughs> <laughs> and he says uh, he doesn't remember that because he was a baby. Mm. And he, I asked him, is there anything he wants to know? I don't, he, he had a million things, but he didn't, I don't think he, he knows how to ask. Um, so I'm going to try to figure out something for him. Mm -hmm. What do you think Albert should know about his father that you'd want Albert to know? I don't know. I don't know. His personality, Mom. Personality, maybe? Huh? Describe his personality. My dad's personality. For, for Albert, because he, he was such a baby. I think that's what he wants to know. He wants to know his father's personality, because he was this, he doesn't remember. Well, he was so little, so he was a baby when his father died. Um, he was one of the main ones that his father would hold in his arms because he was a baby. That's nice. So, Can't imagine baby Albert. I wish I had a picture of a uh, grandfather holding Albert. <laughs> and I gotta ask this because I think it's funny. I hear Albert, Albert says he loved the doggy. I don't know this dog's name. Others say he terrorized the dog. <laughs> Duke. <laughs> Duke. Uh, which one's right? Was it, was it both? That he loved the dog so much he terrorized the dog? Or was he just a baby? Because they said that he was, the dog was like, oh no, here comes Albert. And some go, oh, I just loved on the dog. <laughs> well, you know how, especially little boys, they do things that the mother never knows, that the mother never sees. So I wouldn't be surprised if what he did. Yeah. We both uh -huh. <laughs> run away, doggy. <laughs> yeah. So that's all the kids. And you've seen, I'm not going to talk about history. Your kids are your life. Um, at Carmen, the family. Uncle Ted at Mona, uh, they describe you a lot as being an amazing person. High praise. Um, you're very humble. And I want to ask, when maybe say 50 years pass and half the family has passed on, what's the message you want people to know? What do, you, what do you want the family to be? What do you want Isaac and I and my grand, you, my kids, future kids, what do you want them to know and follow? What do you want? What would you like? Um, I have always told them that I would like to lie down when I die to, to be beside their father, if possible. That would be my thing. Advice. Ask her what advice do you want to leave? She's not hearing yeah. everything okay. you're saying. What, what advice would you want to leave all the children and gran grandchildren that don't get to meet you in the way future? What, what do you want the advice of life to us? What life lesson should we learn from your life? I have always done what comes natural. Uh, 
I don't remember struggling to to do this or not to do this or I just go along. Well, that's uh, beautiful. And it's 2017 and the family on Christmas was just amazing. And that's because of you. And mm -hmm. I know it's not easy for you, but um, I, I want to end this with, because uh, I'm, I'm not your son, but uh, I want my mom and Stella to ask you one question that maybe, because I am not in their head. So uh, if you have a question that you always wanted to know. I don't have a question, but I just want to tell you that I remember what you've done and what you've been through when I was a child, when we were children and when my father died and when I got hit by the car. And uh, I know that it was hard for you, but I thank God it was you and nobody else that I was going to go through that with. That you were the one that was there for me and for us. Because mm -hmm. I know that that was so hard for you. It was only three months after my father passed away. Yes. You had five small children. I was the oldest at eight years old. In the hospital, broken. And you tearing yourself between us all going back and forth, and never having a chance to grieve. But I want you to know that we know it, and it didn't pass without recognition. We know it. And we carry that with us, Mom. As small as we were, we knew it. And it made us who we are. And you did that. You ended up doing it by yourself because he left. So I just want to say thank you. And I thank God for you. That's, that's what I want to tell you. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank my children for being the way they are. For being good people. And tell them that I love them with, the, with all my heart. All my heart. But, do you have a question for her? Um, I don't have a question. Um, just that uh, because of you, you have made our lives easy and wonderful. Um, like I've told you before, you managed to give us a wonderful childhood. And I have always felt safe because of you. I have always felt loved because of you. And I know what an extraordinary woman mother, person you are. Um, for whatever reason, God did not bless me with children. I have just always thought that if I ever had become a mother, if I was ever half the mother you were, I would have considered myself an extraordinary success. And I thank you, and I thank God, I always thank God, thank you for blessing me with this woman as my mother. You are extraordinary in so many ways, Mom, that I could go on forever and ever just listing how wonderful you are and how much I love you. And I thank you also. Thank you for everything. I mean, you've given me a wonderful life, and I thank you for that. I thank you all. I thank you all for being yourselves. We're being who you are. Well, that was great.
Is that and Albert uh, loves you very much, and I wanted Eddie to be here too, and all of them, but they love you very much. Who is that? Eddie and Albert, oh. and Belinda. I wanted them to be here to talk to you, and I will interview them, and you'll hear it. But thank you for doing the interview. I know it's hard, and uh, they're all going to be grateful because. They get to know their dad, and I get to know my grandfather. I'll give you a hug and say thank you. <laughs> I don't feel much, but I'll be on this one. <laughs> I love you. I love you too.